Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Wednesday, uh, February 24th meeting of the Community Safety Working Group. And I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.31 p.m. It appears we have a quorum, so I would like to uh, take our roll call, please. Ms. Ferreira? Here. Welcome. Ms. Pat? Here. Welcome. Ms. Owen? Here. Welcome, Mr. Vernon Jones. Here. Welcome, Ms. Walker. Here. Welcome, thank you, and Mr. Cage. Here. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. And uh, we're gonna go right to it because we have a lot of work to do this evening. Um, just my opening remarks are, I wanna just thank everyone for their can uh, their ongoing hard work, uh, at, in some cases over and beyond uh, what needs to happen at this point, certainly there's been a lot of research and thought going into this work. And so I just want to, as a chair, acknowledge that and respond to it. I also want to reiterate my thanks to uh, Ms. Moyston, uh, Mr. Delaney, and Ms. Bockelman, Mr. Bockelman. Um, as their, their ongoing support most recently has been uh, invaluable to us as well. So thank, thank you all. And a uh, quick agenda review. Uh, we're going to uh, look over the uh, and, and review and uh, approve the notes of February 3rd. Those are the ones that are in our packet and I hope you all have had a chance to, to look at it and uh, be able to comment on it because uh, we are going to refrain from putting it up on the screen and scrolling down and reading every page. Some of these notes are voluminous and uh, it's a little time consuming for us. So hopefully uh, you've had time to read those and be prepared to comment. Um, we're going to go very quickly. We left it in uh, this meeting to see if there are any uh, community service uh, safety working group members uh, have anything to say before we enter the actual agenda uh, where our action and discussion items are. And then following that, we're going to uh, do some follow-up work on the bid process. We're going to take a very quick look at our uh, community safety working group charge, which I think is important to review periodically, but certainly in this case important because it uh, impacts the next two items, which are the discussion of some preliminary and alternative recommendations and considerations uh, that we may be looking at right now. And that too is an important consideration. And then the fourth item is a discussion of the Denver support, Denver support team assistance response program. This is their STAR program which is, has been in operation enough time to get some, uh, to gain some valuable information about their initiative, which might inform our work as well going forward. And then upcoming events, our next meeting date and our, any other topics that haven't come before the chair um, in the last 48 hours and then we will adjourn. So that, that said, I'd like to go to the, uh, the February 3rd meeting notes. And uh, I just want to ask, have all of you had a chance to read that? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any uh, comments, additions, uh, corrections, edits that you want to put forward right now? And Ms. Moist and I uh, ask you to note those and make those corrections if any appear. So this is your time to make any comments on that. Mr. Vernon Jones. I move we approve the minutes of February, what is it, third. Okay. There's a motion to approve the minutes of February 3rd of the Community Safety Working Group. Do I hear a second? I second it. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. 
Uh, all those in favor, you can just give me a thumbs up so I can see it. Thank you all, it's, it's unanimous. Thank you for uh, your work. Thank you, Ms. Moisten, for getting those to us. I know those things have been voluminous lately. So we appreciate all of that work you're putting in on that. Mm -hmm. So Tashina was recently added and I just wanna check to make sure that she was okay with the minutes as well. Let's do that now, please. Uh, Ms. Bowman, welcome. Yeah, I, uh, hi, um, the minutes are fine. Thank you very much, Ms. Bowman. Glad you're here, welcome. And uh, so that that is unanimous. Thank you very much. And we're gonna move right now into uh, uh, public comment. If there uh, are any members of our community who are joining us this evening, welcome. And if you have a comment you'd like to make to the community safety working group, this is the time to be acknowledged by Ms. Moyston um, by a hand raise. And um, the, the group is ready to listen to what you have to say. Yep, and so uh, Mr. Vince O'Connor has some comments to make, so I'm just gonna move him in. Hi, Mr. O'Connor, can you hear us? Oh, to mute. That's, that's his number. He's muted. Right. But it's like on the phone, it's star six, I believe. Mr. O'Connor, can you hit star six? Yep. There. Fantastic. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can proceed if you if if this is the proper time for me to do so yes please feel free okay so um i i have spent speaking with Ms. moisten you know, i have a fairly busy schedule and have not been able to attend your meetings in this manner i'm, I'm not online i don't have access to the internet at home um, but I do have some um, comments about um, what I think would be helpful for the committee to be perceived as having really thoroughly examined the the Amherst situation. One, I, I I really would encourage the committee, and I'm I'm going to do something quite longer and and um, either in writing if I can get access to a, um, a computer um, or um, or orally uh, with Ms. Moisson's assistance. Both, I, I think, to look at the, not just the formal history of policing in the United States, but its actual history and the legal history. Um, I think that if the committee had a, an understanding of the history, they would understand some of the reasons that people have problems with the current structure of policing. The second thing I think, you know, I would encourage the committee to do, whether whether or not it's in the charge, given the revelations about the content of the the training, police training facility in Kentucky, I think it would be very wise for the committee to review and any and all materials related to police training um, for the training facilities that the Amherst Department uses from in Massachusetts. Um, I I think that what you know, if you train people in a certain way, you will get a certain thing coming out. And I think the committee should be be able to say that they have reviewed the material and are thoroughly aware of the nature of the training facilities and um, if they have recommendations for changes to do so. The third, the third thing I think uh, is that 
there should be a, a thorough view of three to five years of Amherst's actual police interactions with the public um, and and try to compare it to a, a comparable community not as not we're not as large as Eugene Oregon but um, the, they they seem to be the model for how you can police a community respond to the 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 issues in the community um effectively without having each interaction involving an armed uh individual um and I think it it's it's essential that we we compare you know, we categorize all the interactions that the police have with the public, and whether those interactions could be you know whether it's dealing with home the homeless or domestic um, disputes and so forth, whether those could be better dealt with and more efficiently and less expensively done, dealt with by individuals uh, who don't carry guns and mace and other things. Um, fourth, I think it, it, it may be an illusion to consider that um, we're going to save money by changing the way we, um, we uh, a, a public safety department would interact with the with the individuals in the community. I think if the police force is reduced, the armed police force is reduced, there are going to be people who, who should be allowed to retire early um, with certain conditions and so forth. And, and it, it's, it, I think it's not, and there's training for the new, for a new way of interacting with the public. And I think it, it may be an illusion to think there's going to be a lot of savings. This is not Chicago, where half of the municipal budget is spent on the police. Um, far from it. And I think we have to be realistic about the fact that we, you know, we may save some money in insurance and so forth, but there's not going to be an enormous savings compared to other communities. Um, and finally, I, I think I'd like to, you know, I'll provide, um, retell some incidents that I'm personally aware of that I think are illustrative of um, bad police behavior in Amherst um, and recent bad police behavior in Amherst that needs to be corrected and why uh, and, and how, why and how um, this needs to be done. Um, I, I think even though the Supreme Court has said that it's okay for the police to lie to uh, suspects and so forth, I, I think it is terribly unwise for the police to interact with the public on that basis uh, across the board. And, um, and there are enough incidents that I'm aware of um, that say to me that this, this is a, a – a endemic problem with literally, I think, every police department in the United States, which goes back to the history of policing in this country. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, hopefully I'll be able to find some time with Ms. Moisten to, to record something that you can listen to on, on your own at your convenience and um, hopefully it'll, it'll be helpful to each individual member of the committee. Thank you. And I'll, I'll try to stay on and listen to um, the, the committee's activities uh, this <clears throat> evening. Great. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor, very much. And I'm going to pull you back into the, um, as an attendee. That's fine. And then um, Lauren Mills has her hand raised as well.
Hi, Lauren. Can you hear us? You're speaking to me, Vince O'Connor. Um, I can't. I don't know. If she, I haven't heard her speak. Okay. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay. Um, I usually write my, try to write my comments down, but I didn't have a chance to, so I'll try to be brief and as clear as possible. Um, I was able to uh, watch one of the recorded meetings before, but I haven't um, attended all of, of the working groups meetings, but um, some of the questions and some of the comments that I had was um, the funding of the, the safety working group. And from my understanding, it was the charge um, is to work with um, figuring out how to improve policing and alternative ways for um, mental health and other um, social you know, problems that deal with mental health and um, domestic health uh, to not use the police in those circumstances. Um, I also, uh, so I, I wanna be clear of what the charges of the, of the working group and how it's going to continue with funding and is that funding um, going to be from a policing budget that is currently standing in the, the town. Um, also, um, I wanted to let the, the working group know why it's so important and you know why I continue to try to be involved in the town affairs is because um, I have young children and I know the, the um, connection between the education system and the policing system and how our children are, you know, at a, a young age, they're profiled in school or tracked in school. So I think, you know, it's very important um, to realize that connection and the importance of that and um, why that can continue into, you know, adulthood or young adulthood um, because it starts so early. Um, also, I wanted just to make the point that from my personal experience of like seeing the police come into the complex where I live, um, they, there's been several, you know, experiences, um, but one that comes to mind is um, the police just using a blank pad of paper. And I just, you know, with all the things that we have to keep in our heads and I just, to me, it just was kind of shocking that it was just a blank pad. And I just, you know, he was trying to take down information but I don't really know how that is like a proper, I wouldn't even say proper, but just a, a, the best way to like take people's information of what happened in an incident is just, you know, some blank pad of paper. Um, you, I don't think you can really get a clear, when you look back on it, how can you really have a clear um, understanding of what the incident was really about? And, you know, so it's, to me, it's very easy to, to get misinformation the way that, you know, policing is, seems to, to just use, you know, a pad of paper and a pen. Um, and I just, I guess I'll just lastly say that I just think the, um, the working group for the work that they're doing and the community is, you know, looking forward to hearing, you know, um, the improvements and um, just thank you for, for your work. Thank you so much, Ms. Lauren. Um, any other comments? And Lauren, I'm gonna um, move you back over to the attendees. Ms. Moyston, if I, if I may, um, just part of my role is to, to keep us on track for our agenda, which is always a very busy and in, in, intense one in terms of discussion. 
So I just want to acknowledge that we're already a couple of minutes into our uh, action items, et cetera. If there, if there is another comment, I, I, you know, I would ask the, you know, our, our committee to indulge us for maybe another couple of minutes. If there is one, if not, we should move on. Yep, there's no one else has their hand raised. Thank you. So we thank you for the public for, for moving forward with, with your comments. As uh, you said in previous meetings, <clears throat> our role is to listen and listen very respectfully and deeply to what, what you've said. We do not interact, but the, the messages that you send to us do inform our thinking and, um, and uh, educate us as to what is going on in our community. So appreciate your attendance and I hope you can stay on and listen to the balance of the meeting. Um, any uh, community safety working group members have uh, anything they want to comment on before we go right into our agenda? Ms. Moist, am I able to see hands for people who are not on screen? Have you, do you, have you? I, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, and I'm just wondering if I can see them too, because sometimes I haven't been able to, and I see two people on our committee off screen. Mm -hmm. so, so again, uh, hopefully oh, that little am... yellow hands will show up, but I don't I, see I don't them. see the hands, that's why I'm asking, so. Yeah. Okay, so given that, um, let, let's move forward. And um, I, uh, let's see, our, our first order of business is to, to look at the bid process. For those of you who are just attending this meeting for maybe the first time uh, or are back again since the last meeting, we have uh, sent out uh, a request for uh, bids We've had a response. We've had a public uh, opening of those bids, and uh, we the uh, selection has been made. I we do have with us um, uh, Anthony Delaney uh, from the, the town to help walk us through this, and you know some discussion about that process and the and including reference checks, et cetera, is something we're going to engage in right now. I, I would like to open this up to uh, the folks who were involved uh, most directly in this process, especially especially as it results to reference checks. And um, also beyond that, uh, Mr. Delaney, I would like to have you comment, if you will, as, as needed on what our options are at this point. Um, so uh, for the bulk of the group, we have, not heard the deliberation at all around the reference checks. So I'd like to open up with that. So for, uh, you know, Mr. Vernon Jones, uh, Ms. Pat, and who else was on there? Actually, actually, it was me, it was me. Ms. Bowman, yes, thank you. I was I not my list there. The reference checks. So if we could open that up, please, I welcome your, your, your opening comments. So um, <clears throat> on Monday, uh, Mr. Delaney emailed us um, the lowest bidder, which is, um, what is the name again? Boston Mantra. Boston Mantra. And then um, he arranged a conference call yesterday for 4 p.m. and 4.15 p.m. And we checked out the references. And at this point, um, the skill set of the lowest bidder, the consultant doesn't match what we're looking for. Did I say that well, Tashina? Yep, that was perfect. So there were four people that listened then, myself, Ms. Bowen, Mr. Delaney, and Ms. Moisten. And, and we started the initial conversation, but I would leave that to Mr. Delaney to walk everybody through the process. So Ms. Pat, just to clarify, so you were saying that the references did not check out, right? Did not go along with the, the what, what the, the bidder had stated? 
the skill set of the consultant mm -hmm. is not what we're looking for. He's okay. basically on health healthcare field. Okay. Even though, even though he, you know, he has lived experience as uh, uh, he's an Indian American. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. But some of his activities work. Yeah. I'll just leave it like that. Also, I believe if you have it, if you didn't see um, his original bid, that um, it's it's. I'm assuming it's available. Um, mm -hmm. But from what I understand, I think this is gonna like if you've reviewed it yourself, and then now we're just telling you that he really didn't he didn't fit what we were looking for. Um, that. Do we all go to a, we have to bring this to vote, correct? Yeah. So, no. We don't? I think Mr. Delaney is going to walk us through our next. Oh, okay. I mean, all before, right. before Mr. Delaney be, begins, I just want to see if, it, you know, I want to just clear the decks for, for him to comment on this, to, to, to look at what our options are based on what's happened over the last couple of days. And, that'll inform our ability to have a discussion and, and you know, make some decisions going forward. So just for the folks who were in this last couple of days, if there, if there are not any more comments, I'll move forward. But I just wanted to just do a last check there. I actually have an additional comment. So when I received the packet on Monday, I quickly looked at um, what he's proposing to do for us and the numbers just didn't, didn't match out. For example, he was going to have three ambassadors for nine hours each, 27 hours. But when I when I looked at what he put down, he put down 18 hours. Uh, there's no budget for translation. I'm assuming the ambassadors will come from um, Boston, no travel costs, just the, the budget didn't make any sense. So, yeah. Thank you. To me. Mr. Yeah. Delaney. Uh, thank you for, for um, joining us this evening and uh, thank you for your work on the front end of getting this started and following us through on this process till now. Um, if you could, you know, let me pick up from there and, and tell us what, what we need to consider and what our options are as a community service, a community safety working group um, going forward. Thank you. Uh, so as stated, we received three bids on Monday. Uh, the low bid was Boston Mantra. Uh, we have, for the reasons outlined, determined that they are not qualified and we will not, we are not interested in awarding them. Uh, so the next step will be to evaluate our second lowest bidder, which is seven generations. Uh, we have started reading that bid. Uh, I have not, I have not formally confirmed this with Ms. Pat and Ms. Bowman, but I imagine we'll be uh, confirming their references tomorrow, hope, uh, or as soon as possible anyway. Um, uh, seven generations bid is a fair bit higher than our low bidder, although not, I think, outside of what we were expecting. Uh, they bid $30,749 for Part A, $27,597 for Part B, and $11,352.49 for Part C. Uh, the third bidder, Canopy Equity, bid $59,000 for Part A and did not bid on Parts B or C. Uh, so next steps. Uh, we will evaluate seven generations um, and uh, make sure that we're happy with their qualifications. Uh, for the committee and, and for the town manager, the decision then is... Uh, I. We had we hadn't we had talked in general way about what how, what we were looking to spend, um, but if we were to proceed to an award, would we be looking to award all three parts, just part A? Um, we we want to get a contract in place quickly, so I I would just need direction on uh, if we are awarding seven generations, how much are we awarding seven generations? Uh, Mr. Bachelman, thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, so so the procure, municipal or public procurement is a complicated thing. That's why I'm so happy that Anthony is here. And just as he said, the the, the lowest bidder is the first one. And this is an invitation for bid. It's not an RFP. So if the with the invitation for bid, the first bidder, if they meet the threshold, 
we give them, we, we, you have the option given to them. The two references are, are uh, referees from, from the committee checked on so they don't meet that threshold. And, and Anthony will sort of draft up the statement, the formal statement, because there is the opportunity for that bidder to say, hey, wait a minute, I did, and to challenge us on this. But so I think, but I think in talking with Anthony, he feels in pretty secure ground that uh, the references did not support this, that bid moving forward. Uh, so that moves us to uh, the second bidder, as he said. And so the question, uh, ultimately, it's, it's a, the town manager has to sign the contract, but it, it will depend heavily on what the advice is from the community safety working group. Um, and so, so, the, so we have to do the same process we did for the first bidder with the second bidder. Um, and because, uh, and as Anthony explained it to me, no matter how you slice it, the third bidder isn't lower than the second bidder because they only bid on part A. And so it's the own, so this is, we, we cannot go to the third bidder at any, in any situation. So we have the second bidder. The question for the committee, as Anthony said, is to award part A, part B, part C, part A, B, and C, or any combination of that, or not to take any action at all and, and to reconsider. So those are the things that are before you for, as you discuss it tonight. Did I get that right, Anthony? Uh, that, that covers it. I, so thank you. Thank you both for, for bringing that information forward. And let me go back and, and thank Ms. Pat and Ms. Bowman for uh, really taking a very careful and, and deep look at this and, and, and acting in, 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 in our best interest as, as a community safety working group. So thank you for that. Ms. Bowman has her hand raised. Yes, yeah, see, I can't see that, so I'm, I'm, I can't see hand raising on there. So I apologize, Ms. Bowman. So um, I just, you know, after being there in, in like kind of like experiencing um, the whole review process or whatever interview process, I mean, um, I want to put out there that I'm concerned if we go forward. Um, I feel like we really need certain things cannot be rushed. And if they're rushed, then we're dealing with a situation where, you know, we might be getting sloppy work and not even really know it until later, you know, until we've already spent the money. I really think that it would be in our best interest to relook at what we, what kinds of programs can be implicated without the help of a consulting group because there are things we can do actively now without the consulting group and think about pushing it, pushing the bids off until we one, have more money and two, like, so we could push it off to, to the next, um, to the next, you know, budget where the budget's being distributed or whatever. And then the next, the other idea is to just re you know start all over with the bid and mm -hmm. and allow people more time because it seems like there's a lot of people who would have bid that didn't bid because the time frame is not realistic so that's just i i wanted to put that out there now because i'm on my way home so i don't know if i'll have the moment later thank you other comments miss pat if i may i was part of the subgroup that um, worked on the uh, part A of um, of the bid, and we got feedback from Mr. Delaney that some folks didn't want to even try to apply because of the time frame. That this is a budget that would take six months. So to me, and I'm just speaking for myself, that I was actually pleased and surprised that we have up to three bidders. And um, my take on the thing is, I'm leaning towards us looking seriously at the um, seven generation, because this is a multiracial, um, also black led organization, uh, Q, whatever, yeah, organization, they, have the experience, they have everything that we're looking for. And I know some of you have not had time to read the document because you just got it last night, but I feel very comfortable for us to move forward. 
um, so that we can get something done. I just want to caution all of us to remember what Dr. Barbara Love told us last week, that now that we have the momentum to take advantage of it, to, uh, because if we don't, you know, it, it might just slip away from us. So I'm interested to hear what other people have to say, but I'm very comfortable with this group, with seven generations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, of course, you know, thank you to <clears throat> all of you mm -hmm. that, you know, looked at this more closely, Ms. Pat, uh, Ms. Uh, Bowman and Mr. Delaney, uh, and obviously explaining it to us and, you know, sharing the information. I've had more of a chance to kind of look through mm -hmm. the information that was shared. Um, and I definitely hear what, what Ms. Bowman's saying, right? We don't want to rush through things and we want to make sure that we um, get the, the, the consulting group that's going to actually do the work and do excellent work because this is critical work that we need is very important. We need to make sure that we have people that's going to follow through, right? Because we've all been, you know, in situations where we think we're hiring, you know, something looks really good on paper and then they don't turn out to be that good, right? So, so we have to be very careful about this because we have, we have a product that we need to give at the end and obviously the community is counting on us. Um, uh, but also I hear what Ms. Pat saying, we, you know, we don't want to lose the momentum. So I guess for me, what I'd like to kind of take the best of both worlds, which is really kind of say, let's, let's continue going through this process, right? What Mr. Delaney said, look at the next bidder, you know, let's see, you know, because the next bidder is, is seventh generation. And, you know, I do see that they're, they're a, um, you know, multicultural group. I know some of those, the, the references that, that are there that provide references. I know some of them. Um, because I've run across them, you know, at UMass and things like that. Um, and they're people that, you know, have our upstanding uh, people in, in the UMass, um, you know, community and in the community in general. So, um, so I'd be interested to, to hear, you know, when you all look at their references, things like that, you know, what, what pans out, right? Um, so I, I think that's the thing, like for us to kind of go through the, to the next one and then if we need to go through to the third one, but yeah, but not make any rushed decisions, right? If they pan out and if, if they're good and we think that they can give us the work we need, then let's, let's, let's continue forward. But if they don't, then let's not feel any pressure to, to just you know, go with anyone because we need to, to get this work done. Mr. Delaney, I have a, oh, go ahead, Ms. Walker. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll wait. Um, sorry about that, Mr. Riley. Thank you. No problem. Go ahead. I also just agree with Ms. Ferreira, um, pretty much everything that she just said. Um, for myself, though, before I can figure out which way I'm leaning, I am still a little bit confused about what would happen if we do decide to move forward in terms of awarding the different parts of the bid. And so do we also have the option to move forward with only certain sections or if we do move forward, we move forward with all three. Um, if you could please just clarify a little bit, Mr. Delaney, that would be helpful for me. Uh, you have the option of awarding all or part of the contracts you could choose. You could choose to award all three parts. You could choose A and B, A and C, B and C, just one. You, you do have those options. Thank, thank you, Mr. Laney, and thank you, Ms. Walker. That was actually my question, Ms. Walker. So save us some time there. <laughs> Mr. Bernard Jones. Well, I again, thank you to the people who have done the work and evaluated some of the references so far. Uh, and I just say, you know, I haven't read every word, but I did read <clears throat> over some of the seven generations uh, proposal, and I you know, we know some of these folks. I think we're very fortunate to have them uh, put in a bid. And I would like us tonight to, you know, dis see if we can decide which parts we would award if their references check out. You know, if, if the committee doesn't says the references don't check out, then, you know, it's another whole thing. Um, but we've got a meeting, we've got some time here. Um, and I can just say, I mean, in terms of my own thinking, I would propose that we not award Part C, uh, even though I helped write the uh, bid specs. Uh, I don't think we 
particular have a great need for Part C. I mean, if we had a lot of time with, you know, but I think we've got our plate full without getting more training and webinars for ourselves. And I think we have a good capacity to find those on our own. Um, and whether we should abort both parts A and B, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm leaning towards awarding part A uh, and part B, I think, you know, we maybe need to have more discussion about whether that's exactly what we need right now or whether our needs are a little different since we're further along in our thinking about some parts of the project. Thank you. Other comments? I'm gonna make a comment, but I wanna leave the, the floor open for folks. Um, I, I guess the, the, the thing I wanna say probably dovetails with what Mr. Vernon Jones is saying. And, I, and there are a couple of things that are on my mind. Uh, we had taken a pretty fast track on looking at this uh, invitation for bid process. It was a really tight window to get people in, to take a look at their work, to make some recommendations. And we're coming back to a point where we say, actually the low bidder in this case does not meet the qualifications uh, that we need as a, as a working group to, to advance our work and support the work going forward. It does seem from what I look that, that the, the seventh generation may have what would be, I think, important to us right now in terms of a, a part A. One of the things that we've been trying to, to do most recently is really start to focus in on our community and get us actively involved with our community in whatever ways possible. And I think the acceleration of that work might be very important. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in looking at that from the point of view of some efficiency and taking into account with full respect Ms. Ms. Bowman's comment that we don't wanna do anything sloppy, but we, we do wanna take a look at uh, seventh generation, I think, at least for part A, because of their credentialing. They have a, a number of, of skills and knowledge and experience bases that fit into what we might want to do as a community uh, safety working group for our community. And uh, I think if we take a look at it, as Mr. Vernon Jones and probably some others have said, if we take a, a careful look at this in a, in a sort of a second, uh, you know, a second look, if you will, at this and take a moment to evaluate it to see if this is possible. I think it would serve us well to come to, you know, come to an understanding that this is one, this is an important thing we want to do, and two, that this may be the actual group that can help us do that. Um, I, I think, Mr. Vernon Jones, I, I agree with you. I'm not down there with C just yet, and I'm not even sure I'm with B, but certainly the first part, uh, given the, you know, the community. Uh, uh, forums we've had, given the comments we've received from the public, it, the, the time is ripe to really connect with these folks, and this may be our opportunity to do it. So if we do have this discussion going forward, you know, my sense is to also take this next step, taking into account Ms. Bowman's comments about being very cautious and not to get into an area where we're doing sloppy work, but certainly you know, evaluate our situation in a way that says we can move forward with confidence um, in, in whatever our next step is. Um, this is going to be a long process. This is not going to be something that ends with a, a, a consultant's tenure as a consultant. When you get into this kind of work, it, this is ongoing work for our community. It could be years if, if it's done right. So, um, that's what I wanted to put out there. And someone had their hand up. I, I think it was Ms. Ms. Bowman, did you have your hand up? I thought I saw a hand raised in there a minute ago. I'll go. Yeah, hang but on, never hang mind. Hang on a second. I'll go. 
Okay, hang on a second. Um, you said never mind, Ms. Bowman? Yeah, uh, it, never mind. Thank you. Um, Ms. Pat. So I appreciate everybody's um, comments and opinion, and they all make sense. So a couple of things I want, to, I want us to think about is that um, we should also think that other communities, it's, you know, it's costing them way more than what we have for um, for, for the current um, uh, consulting firm that we're discussing. We have like Newton, more than $100,000 to do the project. So I just want clarity. Are people hesitant about B and C because of the cost? Or are people hesitant that our group wouldn't benefit mm -hmm. getting consultant to do B and C? I'm not understanding why C is not important. Um, perhaps maybe not everybody are on the same level in terms of understanding or on, the, uh, on doing racism. But for us to just feel that certain parts are not important, I'm not getting that. If people are you know, saying that from financial perspective, let's discuss it. But just to say that we're not going to have consultant do some work for us, um, I'm just worried about burnout, our group, to take on too much on ourselves. If the town is really serious about reforming <clears throat> policing, public safety, it's not going to uh, be cheap. We need to do it right. And this impacts marginalized folks in this community. So I just want to have a sense of why, why there is hesitancy about B and C. Thank you. Um, Ms. Owen and then Ms. Ferreira. So the bid process is a little bit confusing to me and I was wondering if we awarded um, seven, seven generations or the organization for part A, what would our timeline look like to find a consultant for the second part of the bid, so B and C, and how would that affect our recommendations for the budget or for the, yeah, for the budget for fiscal year 22? Mr. Mr. Bachman, perhaps, or Mr. Lane, Mr. Lane, Mr. Bachman, you had your hand up, probably answer that question for Ms. Owen. Sure. So if, uh, if you recall the charge of the committee, it's the initial charge is about alternative forms of policing. Um, and the time frame is very short for that piece. Um, we, we're like a, a month or so away from that, from making those decisions. And that's uh, what we're going to put in FY23 budget. Uh, the bigger pieces are about the oversight commission for, for, for the police department. And then I also would be looking to this group for what are the next steps and some guidance on the type of uh, funding that we're going to need for next fiscal year. Um, uh, so, because we know that this is not going to be a one shot thing. I think everybody has recognized that this is a multi-year effort that we need to carve out uh, funds to make sure that we can do this on an ongoing basis, or at least funds to, um, at two levels. One is for consulting support and then ongoing support for just the kinds of work that we need to be doing over coming years. So it's something that we need to be investing in. So I think, um, you know, the, 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 my immediate concern is getting, and I think you guys talked about, you're going to have it on your agenda tonight to talk about the STAR program. Give, give me some guidance on what you think we need to be doing on that front. Um, and then I think it's the deeper work uh, that Ms. Bowman talked about and others about moving you know, what has to happen going forward. And I think you don't need to worry about time constraints as much on that. I think you can have some more uh, breathing room because I think we're all learning a whole lot about this. And we've learned a lot since you got started in December to where we are now. And I think this bid process really educated us. And so I think um, it's an iterative process. Did I hope, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but I hope so. No, it did. Yeah. And Ms. Ferreira, I think you had your hand up as well. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I guess what I'm looking at is, um, you know, in terms of posing that question about whether we, we go to also award uh, B and C, I think, I think Ms. Pat, in terms of what you were asking, I think for me anyway, I can only speak for myself, is that I guess I do have that, 
that concern, right? Do we have enough funding for everything? And I think that would be a question for Mr. Bachelman, right? Because we still have a part B in terms of for the second uh, part of our charge that we still need to find bidders for too, you know? Um, and from what I was told, we were told from Mr. Bachman, we have 80,000 to do the consulting, to do um, the gift cards, to do stipends, to do all of the stuff, you know, and, it, and to pay the ambassadors and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, money gets tight unless there's going to be more money, you know, to, to, to be to kind of, you know, put into the fund to help us out with this. So when I was looking at part B and um, and part C, I get what, you know, what some of the other members are talking about because part C is basically around, yeah, the, the you know, more trainings for us and things like that. And I think we've been doing that pretty well on our own. And even part B, even though part B, I think it would be helpful, but I guess part B is a lot of what we've been doing too. And we're gonna have discussion about today, which was the alternative um, services and alternative um, ideas for um, public safety. Um, even though I'm assuming the you know the consulting group could could help us out a little bit more with that, but but part A is really the the main you know bulk that we definitely need um, assistance with. So um, so for me, unless you know we're going to be adding more money and stuff like that, I think we do have to have a, a, a conversation about part B and part C. Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Walker. Yeah, I had a couple of questions for Mr. Delaney, if I may. Um, could we, uh, f if we wanted to, vote tonight to award Part A, assuming the references check out, and defer a decision on Part B for another week or even two weeks? Is that a possibility? Uh, I believe that's a possibility. I'd have to I'd have to double check the statute for how long a bid is considered good but uh it should it should be less than two weeks i think you would be i think you would be okay uh it would mean executing more than one contract which would be awkward but not impossible okay. uh and given the way part a is is written um well since we wrote this bid we had a presentation by dr barbara love about the value of envisioning um, what our town will be like without systemic racism. Um, and I don't know that this would work, but it seems like if we're going to be doing a lot of out, or our consultants are going to be doing a lot of outreach to the community, could we negotiate with them the possibility uh, of not just asking people what's wrong with the police department, but actually inviting people right from the beginning to give their thoughts about what they'd like to see, what might the town look like, what changes would we make if we were going to be a more anti-racist uh, town overall. And I ask this based on the fact that it says uh, outreach will uh, include but not limited to. So, on first blush, I don't think what you're asking represents any kind of significant change in scope. It sounds more like a direction you would want the questions and and research of the of the vendor to go in. It doesn't sound like something that would affect their costs or, or anything. So I think, yes, you could provide that kind of guidance, I think, uh, to the vendor in that case. Well, let me let me just say, I don't think we want part C because it really is about more training for us. And frankly, with the work we have ahead of us, I'm not sure we have time to engage in a whole lot more. Uh, if it were about the community, it'd be something different, but this was really about us. And with regard to part B, we may know more after we have our discussion about alternative services that we're gonna have later tonight, uh, we may be in a different position and we may, I just think part B needs some more thought after we have the uh, discussion about alternative services, uh, so. Ms. Pat. 
So I just want us <clears throat> to also prepare ourselves. There is no guarantee that seven generation will even accept to do part A. So we just have to make sure that we, you know, discuss tonight what our next step is. If we vote to move forward with part A, and then we check out references sometime this week, and the seven generation is contacted and they, they decide to decline. So I think it would be very helpful tonight to discuss our next step in case they refuse. If they, you know, since they are the run, uh, you know, they are the, nobody else, you know, bid on B and C. So we need to discuss what our next step is. Tonight. So Mr. Mr. Delaney, if we were to, uh, you know, tonight decide that we want to uh, deepen the assessment of the ability of seventh generation to, to deliver part A services. And we went back to them uh, in, in a similar way as we did initially with our, with uh, Boston um, mantra and did a reference check, what would be the turnaround time for that, do you think? Uh, so if we, so if we, if we were to decide tonight to move forward, what would be the time frame? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I assume if I, if we get the reference check done tomorrow, um, and they check out, then I would proceed immediately to write up a contract, send it to them on Friday. Um, then, then it's basically kind of up to them how quickly they turn it around. They could sign right away if they want to have their lawyer look at it. It could be a couple of days. Then it comes back to us and we will sign it within one work day. So realistically, I, I think midweek next week, we could have it in place. Could be even faster, but but I think realistically a week. So, and I'm going back to Ms. Pat's comment too, if, that, if that's, uh, let, let's say it's a week, let's say it's next Wednesday, we're able to come back to this. Um, if, you know, we get back to that point and we say that's a no, then, you know, our contingency plans would have to be made in advance of that. So um, let's assume for the moment that uh, that doesn't pan out. Uh, that's just a broad assumption and I'm not putting anything into this. There's no intentionality here. But let's just say if it didn't, uh, we would know sooner than later and what might we be considering as a, as a working group in terms of next step? What might be in front of us to think about as next steps? You're still asking me? Yes. Uh, so on paper, the, the next step would be to look at our third bidder. Uh, our third bidder's bid is very high. Um, so I, my gut is that this, this committee would not be interested in spending nearly $60,000 just on part A. Right. Uh, in which case the discussion would be, frankly, doing, we could go out for another IFB Frankly, it is probably not realistic to do that and get your recommendations in time for the, the council's first deadline, because it would be uh, it would be at least another two weeks. Right. We wouldn't have someone in place until the very end of March. Um, so then I, you know, then, then the decision would be: Are we looking for to revise and do this on a longer time frame? Uh, uh, are we comfortable going without the consultants and, and making recommendations on our own? Um, it would be basically all options would be before you, uh, I guess. It would be it, it would be wide open. Uh, other than we could not have another bid under the original uh, in the original time frame. Right. We, we'd okay. just do another one on a different time frame, or we'd go without. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, what Ms. Pat said made me have another question. Um, Mr. Delaney, when someone submits a bid uh, for an IFB of uh, the structure of ours, are, is there any obligation of the bidder to um, do the work if their bid is accepted? And is it any different because it's in three parts here? 
Uh, not in any practical way. They they assign they sign that the bid is submitted in good faith. Um, for some for some bids, uh, I do require that they submit a bond, so that if they decide not to take advantage of it, we can recoup some of our lost costs. We did not require a bond on this bid. Uh, it would be fairly unusual to bond a bid of this low a dollar value. That's normally something for construction. Um, I, I will say, I find it, I, I imagine it is unlikely that having gone through the bid process and gone through the uh, frankly very strong effort of putting the bid together, that they would decline. That, that's that doesn't usually happen barring some incredible change in circumstance on, on their side in between submitting the bid and getting the notice. So I'm, I'm not terribly worried about that. And, and we were quite clear in preparing the bid that we might not award all three parts. And as you saw, they submitted actually three separate packages. So I, I think they understand. I, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Ms. Walker. I'm backtracking a little bit just because what I wanted to speak to, we've kind of way past. Um, but I wanted to comment on Mrs. Pat's question about um, our hesitation for moving forward with Parts B and C. And I think it absolutely has to do with the money because that's the only reason that we're right at this minute making the decision that Part A is more important, I, I think, because we're trying to figure out, like, we're trying to prioritize right now because of the budget. I don't think it's the timeline because we already decided that the timeline was already really short before we did this process. Um, and so I think if the budget wasn't in question that we wouldn't have any hesitation just awarding all three parts right now. Um, and so then my question to the group is, and something that I'm a little bit confused about why we would hold off on parts B and C if we intend to award them at all, because then we're shortening the timeline for that. And we already have bids for those parts. So I'm not understanding why we would look for more bids if we intend to move forward with those parts at any time, why we wouldn't just do it now, if that would also be because of the budget. Ms. Ferrer, I'm sorry. No, I guess like to clarify, so we wouldn't be, even if we were holding off on, on making decisions around BNC, we wouldn't be looking for any other bids for BNC. This would be like, we, we would just be awarding A, right? And then deciding on whether to award BNC to this bidder, right? That's my understanding. I didn't, I, I didn't think we were gonna be asking for any other bids for BNC. Ms. Walker. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rara. And then, so my question would still be then, so the reason we would hold off at this time is what? No, I, I don't think we need to hold off. I think we can make decisions if people are ready to make decisions, or I think what Mr. Uh, Vernon Jones was saying, but Mr. Vernon Jones, you can speak for yourself, but how I understood it was that if we need more time to think about it, and I think that's why you asked Mr. Delaney that, if we could hold off on B and C, and then just make a decision on A if the references check out. But, um, you know, I think if we're ready to make decisions, let's, let's go for it too. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to move, move this forward and I'll come to you, Ms. Pat, in a second. I, I'd, I'd like to move this forward in, in thinking about this too, because we could we could sit here and, and, you know, keep rolling this over and over and over. I, I guess my question related to the time frame around it is, if the if part A was able to be awarded, could part B be awarded at any time going forward uh, within that part A process? And I guess that's to Mr. Delaney. Uh, not at any time. The, the I, I I believe I'll double check it, but I believe that we're expected uh, under statute to award within thirty days. Uh, so. We, we, we would have a few weeks, but uh, we couldn't we couldn't kind of hold it in the air indefinitely. But that ostensibly could give us some time to uh, examine this part B a little bit better relative to the work that's going on in part A. You could. Ms. Ferreira? Uh, yeah, I guess for me though, it is confusing for us to kind of wait. If we're gonna award part B, I think we need, we need to award part B because part B it goes to, first part of our charge that we're on the deadline to meet. Like, you know, 
in the next couple of weeks, you know, by April 9th or whatever. So, I mean, it doesn't make too much sense for us to wait. I mean, if we're going to wait to award Part B, let's say, um, it, we'd have to go by next week or something like that. You know, we couldn't wait longer than that. And and for me, really, we need to, you know, I guess we need, could we kind of sound it out and see where people are at in terms of things? Because maybe we might be ready to move or not, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, we need to, I'm saying like in terms of, because I know we still need to check references, but I'm just saying in terms of talking about be okay miss would you all raise your hands again because i know mr I delaney did, was was yeah miss miss pat was and then miss mr delaney and then i don't know who was after that because a lot of hands went up at one time then miss walker okay so you know i'm in the business of negotiation negotiation all the time as a business woman so what is wrong with us <laughs> asking the town council that the $80,000 budget isn't going to cut it if we're really going to get this right. It's what I'm putting out on the table for us to think about as we make decisions tonight. I've been biting my tongue <laughs> for a while, so I just spit it out. <laughs> that's that's got to hurt. Don't do that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Ms. Patton. Who did I say was that? Mr. Delaney, and then I think uh, Ms. Walker was after Mr. Delaney, yes. So I, I do wanna point out while we can wait to award part B, from the vendor's perspective, I'm imagining there are some efficiencies to them for ramping up both parts at once. And in the interest of fairness to the vendor, I would not want to wait terribly long to make that decision. I, I'm imagining they'll do better work if they know that they're going to commence work on both or, or know that they're only getting one part of the pie. Thank you. Uh, I'll go Walker. for two. Ms. Walker. Ms. Walker. Um, I just wanted to speak to Ms. <clears throat> Vera because she was asking the group like uh, she wanted to see if we were ready to move forward. Um, and I think for me to be able to feel confident in making a decision right now, I need to know more about our budget. And I don't know if that, that like other people are wondering that, but I, I want to move forward with all parts of research that need to be done. And I want them to all start as soon as possible because I want our consultants to have as much time as possible. <clears throat> but I also wanna know how much money we have and if we're even able to award all three parts. Um, and I think we need to know that before we decide. Budgets, what is it? Um, okay, Mr. Mr. Bachelman. I think Ms. Moisson is able to answer this as well. So we there is eighty thousand dollars appropriated for this project and for this fiscal year. Uh, next, a new fiscal year, we're we're finalizing that budget right now. So again, that would be something to be looked at for next fiscal year as well. As I said earlier, is I we see this as a multiple year project, and we'll have to, you know, this group can help form what should the next steps be. Um, and I think that also, um, I know the time constraints are driving a lot of this and we don't wanna lose the momentum. Um, so I think that, you know, we can look at caden cadencing the, the work so it gets done in an efficient way. Uh, in terms of where we are in the budget, we have allocated stipends for the working group. Uh, we're, we're budgeting that around $10,000. There's some money that the working group has talked about in terms of um, um, incentives and, um, honoraria for people participating in some of the outreach efforts that the working group wants to do. Um, and those are the only things, you know, I've only, I've been paying attention to what the working group, there are outside people who have asked for funds out of that $80,000. There's a reparations for Amherst group that has asked for funds. Um, and there's likely, you know, we have not advertised that this, these funds are available. There's not a grant making process for this because I've really felt strongly that your work has been, est has been established by uh, by me to answer the, the goal of the council. And so I need to support your work first. And then if there are funds left over, we'll look at other things. I Jennifer, is that, uh, that's sorry. sort of the numbers, right? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I, w I wasn't, just, this is going back real quick and then going forward. I wasn't too much worried about the, the budget part of it because in looking at, you know, uh, looking at, seventh generation for example they're they're coming in short of that eighty thousand uh, dollars 
to the, the, the tune of about $20,000, $22,000. So if, if they were awarded A and B, we're, we're, we're still under. And if that has anything to do with the, you know, with us moving forward on a decision, then, you know, that, that needs to be thought about as well. Especially given what you said, Mr. Bachman, about there's some other things, but even with those other things, um, you know, if, if some additional costs come on, they could be probably put into the next budget process. Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira. Well, we have a draft of a second invitation for bid. It yeah. has a lot of things on it that we were hoping a consultant would do for us before our final report is due at the end of June. If we award both A and B now, uh, we will not have funds, sufficient funds to even invite a bid for the, um, for everything that we had in the second one. And maybe that's what we want to do. I don't know, but I think we need to face the fact that if we award, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to award part A. If we award part B tonight, uh, we probably are making a decision that we will not be able to go out to bid uh, until uh, next July uh, for anything that's in the, the draft we have of a second IFB. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Bowman. Yeah, and I, you know, and I'm in total agreement with Mr. Uh, Vernon Jones. That was my understanding too. You know, so that's where we need to kind of, you know, think about because there is a budget. Um, a connection here because if we award A and B, and not even the, not, and, and, and if we award A, B, and C, <laughs> you know, then you know we're basically saying we're not going to be doing part part two, the other the other um, mm -hmm. bit that we were going to go out for, and that one I know is for our second part of the chart, so we need to really think about that. Miss Bowman, and then Miss Miss Pat. So, I mean, I just feel like I'm just going to go like, OK, before I even go there, what when is our fiscal when is the fiscal year or up or whatever? June. And June. June. End of June. OK, so basically what we're doing is we're saying, are we going to use this? Are we going to allocate this money out? And basically from this point on be broken till June? and have no, no room to wiggle, are we going to allocate one part and then we'll have some room to wiggle if, as things come up, because things are going to come up? Or are we going to just push it all and look at, for another alternative? That's what I'm hearing are our options. Because it looks like, like, I just, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to, to bankrupt the committee, like, with so much time still like and have no wiggle room. Mm -hmm. well, that's just where I'm at. Okay, um, let me just, that, that's a question. And I think maybe uh, I'm gonna come to you, Ms. Pat, right now, but I wanna just maybe if we can, you can put that in your, your, your question bank, Mr. Delaney, and maybe Mr. Bockelman to think about answering that question. In a second, I wanna go to Ms. Ms. Pat, and then someone else had their hand, there were several hands going up at the same time. I didn't get the sequence, but Ms. Pat, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so I just want, uh, Mr. Ross, um, thank you for raising that. I just want to remind our subcommittee, uh, Ms. Um, Alicia and Mr. Ross, we had mentioned that the budget we currently have would not be able to support part B, uh, part two, and there was a suggestion that, um, the funds should come from the police budget, or maybe the two police officers that we have freeze on. Mm -hmm. And I remember we discussed it at the regular meeting, in one of the meetings that we had. I just want to refresh everybody's memory that the budget we're talking about is for part one, because I love numbers. I don't, I don't forget numbers at all. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my recollection that I don't want to repeat myself that basically part two should come from police funds budget. Thank you. So 
um, Ms. Walker and then Mr. Delaney and, and Mr. Bachman, I want to go jointly to you after to maybe go back about Ms. Bowman's question around budgeting, if you can remember that. Ms. Walker? Um, yeah, so I was actually just going to say a very similar thing to Mrs. Pat that we were hoping that for part two, because it was dealing with the police department directly, that we would be able to find funds within the frozen police positions to fund um, the consulting group for that part. But we don't have a, an answer to that. So I think that's something we would need to know sooner than later. So if we can look into that now, um, I would urge the group to start looking into that. And then also, I think we need to just ask the town council for more money and see what they say. I, I think we should just do it as soon as possible or if, see if there's any possibility, because I also agree with Ms. Bowman that, you know, if we do have enough money to award, but then that leaves us with no money left. And we have to keep in mind that we still haven't given the gift cards to any of our participants. What if there's more participants? What if we get so many participants, we don't even have enough money to give gift cards to all of the people who participate. We don't wanna put ourselves in that position. Um, but also the community engagement work to me is the most important part of this. And so like, I don't want to not invest the time and money into that part that it deserves. So I, I, think, I think we need to do a little bit of figuring out about that, the funds that we can use for those two things. So let, allow me to go back uh, to Mr. Delaney and maybe Mr. Bachelman as well to, to you know, kind of give us some insights into you know, what our budgetary options or opportunities may be here, uh, if I can put it that way, uh, given Ms. Bowman's comment about uh, really saturating our funds this year and not being, and others not being able to go on to, 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 to part two with this. Um, and also considering, you know, accessing uh, police budget funds. Uh, any, any comments that you can, can help us with in terms of uh, because we, we really need to move on this and, and make some kind of decision. I just want to say too, I was recognizing, uh, I think it was you, Mr. Delaney, or, or I, I'm not sure, Mr. Delaney or, or Ms., Mr. Bachelman, about the efficiencies of awarding both A and B to, to a consultant, because it just, it, 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 the, the, the two pieces kind of merge for them as in terms of the, you know, optimizing the delivery. So let me stop there and, and go to either one of you, whoever wants to raise their hand first and comment on the budget matters for us. I'll defer to Mr. Bockelman on budget questions. So what we know we have is the $80,000. We know that we've allocated uh, funds for the stipends for the the working for the working group. We know that the working group, and we don't have a budget for the um, honoraria and the gift cards and all those things. So, so we would need a number for that. We know what the bidding price is for um, the vendor who's put forward the bid, and those are all capable of being accomplished in this in this budget. Um, and I think that if, you know I'm not you know if you're looking at this, um, I think there's also the the committee needs, the working group has to think about, and so does the town staff, what are we capable of taking on? What can we accomplish? What, what is what um, you have to be able to manage and the, consult, and the consultants need to be able to manage their time as well. So I think that's all been factored into the bid that has been presented to you. Um, the funds, you, you mentioned the two police positions. So those positions, those are, uh, those are dollars that are in the police budget. I'd have to talk to our finance people to see um, how that gets re reallocated, if it can be reallocated into a different purpose, because when the, the monies are appropriate, it's, it's, it's appropriate for a purpose. So I'd have to see what it, what actions need to be taken to do that. I, we can't just sort of move money around freely. Um, they are voted specifically for things. And so, um, you know, if we, it, like I can't take this $80,000 and hire a police officer with it, for instance, I can't just move it around like that. So there, there are specific reasons that people, that the council votes to budget. So I'd have to look at what it would take to make, to accomplish that. But what I get, I think what I was referencing though is my mind is looking at FY23 and what is our work plan for FY23? And I think that's, we are spending a lot of time on this. I think, you know, if you want to move forward with, 
you know, to, just to initiate the work and get something going. I think that's a valuable effort. Um, but I also would like the working group to be thinking about what's our longer term uh, job here, because you spent a lot of time thinking about these things. It's very helpful. I think having consultants helping us guide that uh, was, was the intent to help think about those, the other steps that need to have, that have to happen going forward. Um, so I don't have a clear answer for you other than I know what we have with the 80,000 and what is before us with the 80,000. I think for myself, I, I, I'd, I'd like to ha have this, you know, get going. I mean, I, I think we, you know, we, we have to capitalize on some energy right now. And if the best option right now for us in terms of advancing the work is, is to award A and B, then, uh, you know, let, let's do that and, and take some time to plan further around that. I, you know, I'm, from the discussion, I'm a little worried about um, just A, if that, that puts some restraints on, you know, the ability of consultants to, to fully deliver what has to happen, you know, with, with, with both pieces. So, um, you know, my, my thinking on it right now, as you know, I've I been changed a little bit here, saying part A, part A definitely, but if, uh, if we can award part B with the understanding that uh, we're gonna invest our, our money in A and B and then take some time to really, you know, you know look at budget, other budget options that might fund the, the remaining work of our charge, then that, that's, where, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I'm just curious to hear from Mr. Cage and Ms. Owen. I can go first. So I'm really interested in moving forward with A and B. While I understand the budget constraints and I do agree that we do need more money, the second part of our charge to me, it doesn't feel like it's more worthy of more of our budget. Poli the oversight of the Amherst Police Department on paper reading through their presentations, they look amazing, but we, we all know that that's not the work that's actually being executed. So I'd like to focus more of the consulting budgets on alternative services and ways to engage with the community and strengthen the community through like um, it, implementing things like mental health, through thinking about like stuff like mental health, social services, that type of thing. But that's, I can only speak for myself. Um, I agree that we should move forward on A and B and what Ms. Owen said, like how we need to get like the community involved in like the outreach and stuff. That's very important in our work. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. So, so, so given that, and and given you know also and, you know, the time and energy we're putting into this, are we at a point as a as a working group to entertain a motion for um, uh, going forward to award? Um, a, you know, parts A and B uh, to uh, seventh generation with the understanding that it does involve a, a, a reference checking process that could take us into next week. Uh, we, we haven't talked about um, necessarily contingency planning, but there seems to be some uh, assurance. If I'm misspeaking, Mr. Laney, please tell me. That, that there would probably not be uh, any difficulty in, um, in you know, this, this particular organization, you know, meeting the, not only the qualifications, but also meeting the dem demand since they have a clear understanding of what this process is about. I, I think it does allow us to move forward and we probably would have some work going forward, certainly on budgetary matters, but also it seems that Mr. Mr. Bachman, that's something that could be investigated uh, a little bit more. And so I guess my question is, um, you know, my, my statement would be, I, I'd like to make a motion um, and get it seconded and see if there's any bit more discussion on um, moving forward with awarding A and B to seventh generation uh, 
with the understanding that we would um, we would follow through as required to um, secure their services. So I'm, I'm yeah, Mr. Mr. Bachman. Just to be clear, the, the working group is not the awarding authority. What you'd be the motion would be recommend to the town manager to award what you just said. Thank and you. I'm part yeah. of this, obviously. So yeah, sort of wishful thinking, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> So, so the motion would be to, um, to, to move this recommendation to, to the town manager uh, in that case. Um, can I get a second to that motion? Second that. Okay. Um, is there any discussion of that motion? Ms. Walker. Um, I apologize. My computer died for a minute, so I popped out and missed the very beginning. And so I just wanted to confirm that um, we're asking them to move forward, but that's pending the uh, check of references and all of those things. That's correct. Thanks. Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, I'm in support of this motion, but uh, when it comes to uh, this amount of money and voting, I'd like to know that we have it worded correctly. Can, can we hear, hear the a statement of the motion? Sure, I'll try to restate it. I guess the motion would be to recommend to the, is it the town manager, Mr. Bachelman, the town manager uh, to uh, pursue a, awarding this, uh, uh, this, this contract for parts A and B to seventh generation with the understanding that they would have to fulfill the requirements of the uh, uh, reference checks, and that uh, this will be done in a, in a manner as timely as possible to get the information back to the um, community safety working group, looking at as probably within a week. Mr. Bachman. So, so what I'm understanding is um, you're recommending parts A and B be awarded to the, the vendor who's currently being discussed. Um, right. Subject to, uh, I assume it'll be Ms. Pat and Ms. Bowman checking references just like they, we did just with like the first before, one. Yeah. Uh, and that if that pans out, we can move forward with contracting. We don't have to come back to, you don't expect us to come back to the, to the committee next week. We're gonna, no. keep, we're gonna keep moving. Yeah. Okay. So it's, is that articulated well enough as a motion? <laughs> so given that that was just restated, uh, Ms. Ms. Pat, uh, you seconded the first yes. iteration yeah. of that. Would you like to second this as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there any further discussion of the motion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, just give your hands up. Reckon we can see them or say aye if I can't see you. All those opposed? What? Sashina. Sashina. Hang on. All those opposed? Can just speak out if I can't see you. I don't see hands on, on Ms. Ms. Bowman's. So I, I, I can't see it, Ms. Moist. I can't see if she's raising her hand or not. She doesn't have her hand up. Okay. So Ms. Bowman, are you able to, to to vote verbally on this? Um, I don't hear her. And I don't see her. <laughs> Ms. Bowen, we would re really uh, Want to have your your vote on this as a complete vote of the um, of the working group? If you're able to respond to that motion, uh, voting yay or nay. And I abstain. Abstain. Thank you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Am I correct in saying we have eight? Um, four. Eight yeas and, and one abstention? 
No. Um, six. It's seven. Seven and one. Seven, seven and one. one. I'm sorry. Seven and one abstention. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, I'd like to move that we ask the town manager to seek to access additional funding uh, to make it possible for us to go forward with a phase two uh, process of procuring consultant services. I'd like to second that motion. Any discussion of the motion? Um, actually, discussion, I, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, if I may, if with permission of the seconder, I'd like to rephrase it and specifically ask that it be to uh, seek funds that were uh, previously earmarked for the police department, um, perhaps including the positions currently held in reserve. Okay, I'd, I'd still like to second that motion. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Any discussion of the motion? If not, all, all in favor, uh, raise your hands. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ms. Bowman. Um, I actually stepped away from my computer, so I have no idea what we were just talking about. Okay, we uh, we had a motion uh, that was um, it was moved and seconded that the um, uh, Mr. Bachelman would, if I'm stating this right, Mr. Vernon Jones, please correct me. Mr. Mr. Bachelman would. Uh, we would we would ask Mr. Bachelman. Yeah. Well, he would if he asked. We asked him to. <laughs> We asked Mr. Bachelman, to, why don't you stay? You stay there. You said it. I don't want to speak for you. Go ahead. Well, to Sheena, the basic, the motion is that we would ask Mr. Bachelman to seek to access additional funding for a phase two, uh, a consultant for phase two, and seek funding from sources allocated to the police department, perhaps including the two positions currently on hold. Okay, yay. Okay, so I, I, I believe that was unanimous. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Morrison, you can record that. So we've completed part A of our business for the moment. And we have about two seconds left to do all the rest of it. <laughs> so uh, let me just say thank you for all that deliberation. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Delaney, uh, for joining us tonight and offering your information and clarification. Appreciate it. Um, I think, you know, we, we talked a, a, a bit about our, our bit about, a bit about, about our charge. About our charge. Are you hearing a reverberation? I don't know where that came from. Where that came from. There's an echo though. An echo. Do you hear it now? Okay, I don't know where that came from. Um, we, we, we talked uh, intermittently about our charge and I, I wanted to, and I, I think people are well versed in that right now. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was remind us of, of our charge. And uh, I don't think there's any reason right now to, to put it up and, and start discussing it, but our, our charge is, the, is what is actually dictating the, our path of, and scope of work for this particular group. So in, in the interest of time and also in to, to see how much of this discussion we can move forward, um, I'd like for us to consider uh, and then kind of, and I guess in the future have this charge in front of us as well whether it's you know on our desk or somewhere on your screen is really because I think the, we're going to be coming back to this more and more uh, which is going to guide the work going forward and we have two items um, on our on our uh, action and discussion list this evening one is the discussion of, of rec alternative recommendations and considerations uh, for 
um, policing and community safety in, in Amherst. And another was a discussion of the, the Denver support team, the STAR program that um, has some really great information in it and uh, could inform our work. Looking back at part C, actually in terms of recommendations. So um, given that, I, I wanna just check in with, with folks um, we can probably put two of these together. I don't think we're going to have a sufficient amount of time to discuss both of these. So would it be the, uh, the group's pleasure to start with either one and go from there? Mr. Vernon Jones? Why don't we see if we can talk about both at once? We could, because one is actually, let, let's, let's just dive in. I know people uh, sent in documents, they're in our packet, which talks about uh, a particular aspects of uh, what we were thinking would be preliminary uh, recommendations. So let's just go right to this. And I, I guess I'd like to think about this as more of a brainstorming. And I'm borrowing those words from, uh, you know, Mr. Vernon Jones, I think he mentioned this before, so that's not original but that we at least are creating a, a picture and painting a picture of where we stand as a group in terms of what's important to us right now. So that said, let's let's put some time into that and as you need to uh, incorporate the the um, the work of the Denver um, uh, city of Denver regarding policing and anyone feel free to start in on what they would like to have us consider or listen to as a group. Ms. Ferreira. In the interest of time, I guess I'll jump in because, you know, I want to keep the screen uh, moving. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think I read like at least, you know, not intently everything that everyone wrote, but it, it seemed like everyone had pretty much, uh, a, you know, a, a reoccurring theme in terms of at least uh, kind of like um, providing some type of crisis. Um, service, you know, I know for me, I really looked at like Cahoots and Denver and some other ones out in uh, California, like Sacramento and Oakland area and the New York um, program that was out there too, um, to kind of really look at and model something that would be providing, you know, services, not only for mental health, but domestic violence, uh, you know, houselessness, homelessness, uh, youth, uh, you know, anything that's response to like school or youth issue, um, you know, really looking at anything that was nonviolent. I would go so far as to put in, you know, noise complaints, um, trespass, those types of things um, to, to have it be, you know, to a mobile service crisis unit that would have, you know, a, a, a medic person there, but then social workers that were peer, you know, peer informed and also with folks that are, are, have lived experiences um, to be able to provide the service, it be 24 seven and not be um, connected to the police, it be a separate entity, um, but be fully resourced and re fully funded. I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't want something because I know some of these other models that I looked at because they don't have like the Sacramento model, even though they, they look really great, they don't have enough funding, you know, they only run like two days during the weekend, you know, because they don't have enough funding. So if we're gonna do something like this, we can't, uh, um, you know, create a program and have them be on crutches because then what's gonna happen is that it's, they're gonna be doomed to fail. You, you see what I'm saying? And then we'll say, hey, see, it, you know, it didn't work, uh, so on and so forth. So we need to, you know, if we're gonna be recommending this, we need to know that there's budget and staffing that's gonna come, you know, with it. And it was interesting when I was doing my research into this, I, you know, came across the fact that, and I didn't even know this, and I don't know if you all knew this, that um, back in the days, there were some police stations that ran ambulances and, 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 you know, that they were the ones that would be in ambulances and, and were the ones that would respond to anyone that had a health issue. And obviously that was done away with because people were like, no, we don't want police showing up when people have a health concern. So that was done away with. So, so there's already precedent for what it is that we're doing here. 
in terms of removing some of these um, services from the police. Um, you know, and for me though, I went beyond, and I know that you know Miss Pat did too. Kind of looking at also like you know a youth center, you know, possibility in terms of, of you know within um, Amherst, or also kind of um, enhancing. I know we already have the Boys and Girls Club, you know, out here, so I don't know what that would mean. Maybe enhancing what they do, but really looking at that because we don't have a place for a youth, especially by talk youth that could really be something, you know, that enhance and help out. Um, for me, I looked at Ms. Pat and um, even you, Mr. Wiley, that looked at like training for the police and, and Ms. Pat, I know you were looking at other things for the welfare and the African center and stuff like that. So, um, or a data system for the police too. Um, so I didn't look at any of those things. I really want to focus in more so on kind of alternative service. That, that's really my priority. And, and like a youth center. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you, Ms. Ferreira and Ms. Pat and uh, Mr. Vernon Jones and um, um, Mr. Cage. I mean, all, all submitted some things in writing for us. I can't remember if anybody else did. I, I did an overview letter, but Ms. Ms. Owen, thank you. I, I think we're, we're giving this a lot of thought. And um, so thank you for that. Let me go on Ms. Pat. You're on mute. Sorry. So basically what I did was I reached out to my networks <clears throat> and asked them, you know, what what would like what they would like to see different. And so that's what I put together. And the theme was more around families, around uh, people at low income and you know having a space a safe space for bipoc community so uh like a black cultural center youth center having uh, inclusion equity i'm saying the, the wrong way diversity equity inclusion um director in the town i'm actually even going on a limb that we already have somebody who's already doing it while reinvent the wheel that would be miss moisture and um, so just, I, I was just focusing on what be, uh, feedback I was getting from my network mm -hmm. and what I, I would like to see myself too, so. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in terms of low income, um, the voucher system of helping people with rent that isn't working right now. Uh, the town contracted with um, an agency that is not very efficient. It's a long story, but people are not getting the help, the resources that the town has made available to people to help with their rent. It's not working for some people because of language barrier, because of immigration status, because of cultural competency issues. The town has the resources and I am very appreciative that that is available to people, but they're not, some people are not accessing it. Sorry. Um Thank Ms. You, Ms. Wally, Ferrer, can, Ms. Can, can I just interject real quick? Because just I forgot when I was saying that. The other part too is just in terms of funding, I really do think that, you know, we shouldn't be taking the funding or, or trying to go fundraise. We need to kind of take the funding from like whatever the police have because they have too too big a funding and we need to kind of parcel that out. It shouldn't be, you know, it should be looking at what the police have in terms of we're removing those services from, from them. So therefore use their funding and then if it's not enough, then get extra funding. So I wanted to be clear about that. Okay. Um, Ms. Owen, uh, Mr. Cage, Mr. Vernon Jones, you all worked on some stuff. Um, I remember Ms. Owen. I'll go next. I agree completely with Ms. Pereira. And when I started doing the research on the Denver Star program, um, that's where I was thinking, like, if we do this, we need to do it right. I was thinking of it just when I started looking into it more, I was reading about dispatch and I was thinking like, okay, if this is going to happen in Amherst, like we might need to consider having a separate dispatch for the, that service, just because our dispatch are used to working with the police. So how will they be able to differentiate the different systems? I also was interested in creating a center to support BIPOC families. It's no surprise that DCF 
polices BIPOC families more than white families. And I think there needs to be support in our community for that. And I think there's a lot of nonprofits doing amazing work and amazing things, but they're ran by um, white women. And maybe this center could be the center to connect all of the resources and mobilize it in one place for families that could need case management and don't have to get case management by being involved with the department. Following that, I'm also interested in a place for young people, especially high school students, to be after school. That was one of the biggest things that I heard at the forum. It spoke, it spoke to me a lot just because I was I am an Amherst High School alum, and I know that I got into trouble as an alum too after school, and a lot of it stemmed from my mom always working, and I didn't really have a place to go after school. So I think that's something that's really important to me, and I'd like to hear Mr. Cage's feedback on that. And then the last thing that I want to bring up to the group is um, creating some sort of system or data system for the police to be more transparent. One thing that really stood out to me was that the arrest logs are posted monthly on the town website. And I don't know how the group would feel about this, but I would feel more comfortable if the same data, the same racial data we requested as like for the year could be on a month to month basis. I think that community trust can start with community transparency. And if it was on a month to month basis, it would hold them more accountable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cage. Um, yeah, like a like having a center for like the youth, that would be like very important to me. Um, because like, after like, like, say after middle school, like there would only be like the boys and girls club, but I don't think that's um, longer there. And um, just having like a center like that, I feel like that would benefit us a lot. Like, it would keep us out of trouble. Um, and it doesn't only just have to be hanging out with friends, like we can be doing like different activities to like, help the community and like give back um and um and not anything just for the youth like there can also be a center for like just like people of color in general like who needs help with like um like what you guys mentioned before like um or just like basic needs um and i think that's very important thank you um other comments i have a comment i'm going to de defer to the, um, the, the rest of the group before I speak. I'll maybe speak toward the end. Uh, Ms. Owen? I guess one last comment that I wanted to make is I'm really interested in learning more about the ambassadors and getting them more involved because I think part of our charge should also be to think about racial equity for the town in general. And there is a huge lack of diversity on the town council. And I mean, I think getting the ambassadors more involved or learning about what that position is and what it entails. And um, I hope it's not a volunteer position, but I'm interested to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, so I really actually really um, appreciated and liked what Mr. Cage had to say. Um, I think that in doing something like that for the youth, we are definitely going to need to talk to the youth and talk about what's going to get them to show up. Um, there's been so many boys and girls clubs. There's been so many like like little things, like they've moved the Boys and Girls Club so many times in Amherst. Like I remember when it was in the big yellow houses by the women's club. <laughs> remember when it was over Murphy's Tavern. I remember when it was where, um, basically where Kendrick Place is right now. They used to have this big glass building and that was the, the youth center. So, I mean, there's, they've, the town has completely, completely, um, how do I say, it kind of like disregards the youth because they just like, oh, we can just move them. Oh, we can just move them. Oh, we can just move them. And then what, what happens when you're doing things like that is that the youth can't trust because there's always a gap between the time that they close down one location and open another. So there ends up being a lack of trust. So I really want to like, if, if um, we're looking, we're coming from the youth aspect, and especially because the youth aspect is so important, we really need to like tap in and really talk to all different types of youth to figure out what their needs are, you know, because we got the gamers and we got the, you know, 
the this and the that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know where everybody is at this point. You know, it's so mush. But um, thanks, COVID. But so yeah, I just want I just wanted to really like put some support behind that. Part of it is because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I do work with youth. I just work with them in a different capacity than, you know, general every day. But the people I talk to mostly are young people. And I can tell you from being a student in Amherst and from being, watching my kids grow up in Amherst, the Amherst slacks when it comes to, to the high school, especially high school, but also middle school youth. It's like they jump from the elementary school to the college, you know, and it's really and that's really frustrating and upsetting because, yeah, we could have these young kids out there doing stuff that's, you know, helpful, you know, for our community. The other thing I just wanted to quick mention and then I'm done, but um, college, middle school, college age and elderly go really good together. And so that would be some place that like a center that could have even both in there or like have like a place where they like we have a day of a week where there's both there because you'll see the compassion in your children when you see them interact with the elderly and elderly just be snippy so you know what i'm saying all right i'm done thank you thank you mr vernon jones so I think it's quite exciting how much, how similar our visions are of what we'd like to see happen. Uh, and, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of details to work out. It seems like there are two sorts of things that are before us most immediately. One is, what are we going to recommend to the town manager about budget requests for the coming budget? And two is, what are we going to try to set up you know, within the next couple of months with the money we have with these two held positions of a pilot project similar, it seems like similar to the STAR program. Um, and I wanted to make two specific suggestions or requests, and maybe these are both of the town manager. Um, I guess, Paul, what I was hoping is that you could look at what the things that we wrote that are mm -hmm. in the packet for today and maybe give us back a list of questions. What else, what do you need to know from us to begin to set up a pilot program? I mean, you know, what, either because you don't think we're in a, can't tell whether we're in agreement on it or whether there are other things you need to know. And if you could generate a list of questions, maybe that could focus our work to get something started more quickly. And the other thing is Which I want- Paul are you talking to? Oh, Mr. Bachelman. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. the other is I wondered if we, I was reading that report from, uh, I forget the name of it, but the one that uh, Jennifer just sent out the link to us. It has mm -hmm. the whole rationale for these community responders and alternatives and reports on a lot of different uh, cities. Um, and one of the things that suggests is that before you institute anything, you have an analysis done of your 911 calls um, to see how many of them, how many of them would be uh, would be sent to an alternative, uh, you know, community responder uh, program. Uh, and I wondered if we could begin that right away, whether it was either with town staff or with some extra stipends for people who already know the 911. I don't know whether it's better to go back and do a month or two of, of the history or whether it's better to start now trying to code them as they come in, but it'd be so helpful to know how many of these, if, if, given the kinds of things we're talking about, referring to all community responders, how many of the calls that come in uh, would that be? And what times and, and days of the week do they come in? Since we want 24 seven, we're probably gonna have, I mean, this, this year we'll have to start with less than 24 seven. We'd wanna know when, when the best time to do it is. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bachelman, any, any immediate res response to, to that comment and request? Yeah, well, I was hoping that you were gonna do all that work, but... Um... <laughs> As I said, which Paul? Because I, started, I, started well, I was just trying to be a little more personal about it. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, that is, I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, uh, the, analyzing the 911 calls, we'd have to know parameters and that, and that's, you know, something I think that can be a very large task. Um, we sort of do some of this already um, through um, uh, our ambassadors program. They are paid, uh, they are employed by the town uh, and we receive funding from the state and additional $50,000 to support them through the spring, which I'm really excited about. Most of this work has been done through CARES funds. So it's not it's not in, built into our budget. So that's, that's a, a great benefit to us. And we're able to run a, run, uh, build a pretty robust program. And that is a model for how we can deliver alternative services. These are not folks that are dispatched by the police. They, they call our COVID hotline that Jennifer has to answer and uh, Angela Mills and other people in our office. And then we record it and give this information to, to the COVID ambassadors. Um, so I think that's where we would look, look towards, um, you know, developing a cahoots-like or star-like program I think I think we would have to look, figure out how to do it, um, how to build it over time, uh, hitting the sweet spots on on when when those people need to be available, um, and and trying to attract people who would want to work in those jobs as well. So mm -hmm. I'll try and come up with all, a more developed process for you. Okay, and and I I think to um, yeah, I mean, I think that that would be a great help to us, certainly. And I, I think that we can, you know, take those those uh, questions, Mr. Vernon Jones, in, in hand. If we if we have some other uh, comments or things that might help inform that process, we can probably get those to Ms. Moyston to, to put forward to you. Ms. Owen, and then I, I have a comment. And if there are no other comments after that, I'd like to move on with some suggestions about how we Mr. might proceed. Okay. Um, Mr. Bockelman, out of curiosity, how many ambassadors are there in Amherst? Or not in Amherst, but obviously like in our town. <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. Um, they all work part time. Um, they come from all segments of our community. It's not just students, it's others as well. Primarily students though. Um, so I don't really know the number. Um, do you happen to know Jen? At some point, I wanna say that we had over 50. I don't know if that changed or not. Um, it went down, or I only see the same one. So at, in the fall, it seemed like we had more than what we have now in the spring. So, so we have had I them. I would say like 25 yeah. maybe now. So we, we've had them staffing the vaccination centers as being support for people getting in and helping space the lines there. As the weather warms up, there'll be more on the streets. Um, as people get out on the streets more during the winter, there weren't many people on the streets. And uh, they also respond to noise complaints and other, uh, not, not noise complaints, but other complaints other than noise complaints that don't fall to the police. Um, we get, we're getting a lots of calls right now of people saying there's a group of people who are unmasked or they're, they're uh, playing, you know, a game in their front line and it's, they're not obeying the COVID constraints. So we, that's not a police call. It's not, doesn't generate a police response, um, but we can send um, COVID ambassadors to have a conversation if that's something deemed um, that they have the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. I like we're we're actually at the end of our meeting time, and I want to take 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 some liberty one to to thank everyone for all this this thought and input that's going forward, and what what has already happened here. And I know we ran short of time to to discuss this more fully. Is that I, I think right now we're trying to harvest what whatever knowledge we've had we've gained um, over the, these almost three months of working together now and put it together into in some form which sort of begins to funnel down where our essential interest is in uh, assuring and uh, assuring that we have uh, all the community safety ducks in line if you will but also that this is all of this work is relating to racial equity and i think this is part of what our our, our charge was and and that was to look at all these complex issues uh, around community safety services and already you can hear from this discussion it's gone you know while it's integrated and connected it's gone well into community services and to some degree away from police work 
which suggests to me like they're, they're still very highly, they're very strongly connected. And so how do we take this complex picture? People are taking a systemic look at it, certainly, because you can't divorce homelessness from the work of the police. You can't, you can't divorce um, the issues of young folks like, um, uh, you know, Mr. Cage and, and other folks who are interacting with the police uh, on a regular basis and what their needs are. So this, this is not just, you know, it's not just the police and then just this or just that. It's, it's, it's systemically connected. And it's, it's clear that we're going to need more conversation about this. Uh, I, I think one of the things going forward is we have to take a really close look at um, and with some precision as to what's going to rise with policing here in the town of Amherst and, and keep that, that in our focus because that, that's our central purpose. It's not that we're divorcing it from anything else, but that's what we're looking at and that's what we're trying to uh, make recommendations out for the most part in our charge. Uh, it, it, and it's not exclusive. And I think we see how all these things are connected. What I'd like to do as we're, we're ending here is suggest we, you know, um, you know, Mr. Bachelman, if you're willing to, to follow up uh, as was requested, then we, we bring this uh, first and foremost up to our, our next meeting and have a fuller discussion. I, I you know, I, I think we're seeing some themes, as Mr. Vernon Jones said, that, that they're, they're very common among us. And so if there are some things we can pull together to say, these are the essential pieces of what we're talking about to make community safety a priority and, and, a, and something that works in Amherst, then that, that, if we can hone in on that, that's gonna help us a lot. And uh, so I would like to put this forward on next agenda and, and give it ample time for some follow-up discussion and to be able to have us all absorb more of what, what you all have put forward. And, and I have some things as well. So um, Ms. Mo uh, Moiston and then Mr. Delaney. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Bachman. Yes, I just wanted to recognize, and uh, Lauren Mills has her hand up. I don't know if you wanted to take comment from her at the end of the meeting. At the end of the meeting, that, uh, yeah. sure. Mr. Bachman. Yeah, so I do not have the capacity to get something to you within a week, uh, okay. the, the level of detail or the, 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 the information that I need, need to assemble. I would uh, ask if the committee is interested in listening to what the police department offers now, because it's going to be what services are they providing that they shouldn't be providing? Where are the gaps in services? Um, and I think it's important for the working group to be open to all voices and wondered if you wanted to hear from uh, the, the chief or whoever in what they in how they are delivering the services that concern us the most right now. Well, that was actually the the last thing I was going to mention okay. because I think we there there I, I I think it it's the time is right to to have a conversation um, with the chief and to explore those kinds of questions. So. I don't know if that's possible and then and then at the next meeting or not. I don't know what his schedule is, uh, certainly. But I, I do think that's another piece of having a conversation rather than just simply going back and forth with, with questions and written answers. I, I think it would we'd gain a lot from a conversation with him and in more free-flowing atmosphere. So I, I can't speak for him uh, or can't speak for this this group as to whether or not uh, you know that that could take a fair amount of time, and we do have the bid process to still deal with. So, um, yes, Mr. Bachman. Yeah, and I think you know what would be interesting if there was a, to bring in the ambassador program as well, the person who runs that, and talk a little bit about how that has been developed and the the frameworks that they've developed. I think that would be helpful to hear as well, because that's in support of, but also in contrast to the the police department. Mm -hmm. Well, at, at the expense of, of I, I don't want to get over ambitious around the next meeting, but I, I do know we're going to be coming back to this important matter of of the the bid award, um, if you will. That has to that has to be in place. We I would like to see this conversation continue in some fashion um, in in our next meeting, and. You know, 
I don't know if there's room or availability for um, uh, the, the chief to come. And if we had some questions prior to him coming, coming in, he could spend some time with us. I just don't know what, what his availability might be. But those are three things that if we were to focus on, we might be able to get those kinds of things done. Uh, and I would like to hear from other folks your thoughts on that too. Ms. Pat has her hand up. I can't see, there she is. Hi, Ms. Pat, sorry, I didn't see yes, you right away. Yeah, I agree that, you know, for me, I can't speak for everybody else. I think I'm so ready to, to hear from the chief. I think the time is right. If everybody is agree, agreeable to that. I just want to ask a quick question. Are we meeting tomorrow or now? Thursday. But is there a meeting tomorrow? No, okay. Okay, Mr. Balkelman and then Ms. Moyston. So I do think that uh, it mentioned, you mentioned uh, the the, um, the consultant. So assuming that we get everything in order, you might there's a, you might want to have that on your agenda. That might take priority over the police because you want them yeah. to get. I think it's important sure. for you to have a framing conversation with them so you understand they understand what your interests are. They understand what their mission is, and they start to lay out a plan. And I think there's that. I would suggest that that be a high priority for next Wednesday's meeting. And that, that's what I was saying. I don't want to get too ambitious yeah, with this. Yeah. And I, and I, and, um, so Ms. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, that when went out, can't, can't hear you. Can you hear me? Now we can, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, my internet is getting funky. Can you hear me now? Yes, we're good. All right. No, I was saying I am in agreement with Mr. Bachman. I think we should have the um, consultants be our priority for next Wednesday. And then, um, you know, with the chief, I think I do want to I, I do want to talk to him, but I think maybe we should have him for the um, the meeting after the next, so we can have some questions and really talk about what we're going to be asking them and focus on. Um, and then maybe we could, we could schedule the, the ambassadors, you know, like as the backup, like maybe the other person after we do the, the consultant, you know. Well, would there be any, object and I'm, I'm all for that, uh, Ms. Ferreira and, and Mr. Bauckham and, and others. I mean, would it be probably to our advantage to have that as our singular agenda item for next Wednesday. So that we're not trying to, you know, have the, 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 the bid matter uh, before us to give us ample time to fully discuss this. So we're not trying to, you know, go back and forth. And I, I that could be well worth our time, I think. Fine with that too. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on that? Because I we could just put that as our agenda, Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I do think most of our time should be coming, you know, working with our what hopefully are our new consultants. Um, but maybe we could still have framing some questions for the chief, so we could have him the next week. Yeah. Well, it definitely. So we could do that in the meeting. Yeah. Certainly. Okay, well, let's let's do that then. Let, let's do that. Those will be the two things we're talking about: uh, preparing preparation for um, a, uh, a a meeting with uh, Chief Scott Livingstone, and the, the uh, follow up on the on the bid process. Those those two items, and that way we won't feel like we're you know getting constrained by time. We should have plenty of opportunity to do that, and um, in the interim. What I would encourage folks to do is submit uh, questions to uh, you, Ms. Moyston, if we could. Uh, that might sort of set the stage for some of the things we might be putting in place for, you know, to, to ask Mr. Um, uh, to ask the chief. I didn't receive um, recommendations from everybody. So if others still have recommendations that they want to send in, that'd be great. Great. Thank you. 
Okay, Ms. Pat. So, so we are assuming that the cons consulting firm will be available on Wednesday next right. week. So if, if they're not, do we have contingency um, meeting agenda if they're not available that day? I guess the only other thing is you don't have if they're not available if that's if that's not not going to happen then I would I would uh, suggest continuing this discussion we're having about recommendations. I can include just all of it on the agenda because we have to have what we're going to speak about on the agenda. So if you I just do, include huh? it all and if for whatever reason they're unable to, um, if they're not available, we still have a full agenda. Okay, so we'll, we'll maybe make that last. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we're all good with that. Thank you. Thank you all. A um, little bit over time, but uh, we're going into upcoming events. And Ms. Moisten, I see everybody looking right at you right now. <laughs> and on Zoom, I can tell they're looking at you. But uh, does anyone have any um, upcoming events that they'd like to announce? If not, um, thank you. Uh, next meeting date, next Wednesday, the, uh, the 3rd of March, is that correct? 5.30, okay, I would remind folks uh, that if they have any uh, things they wanna include in the packet, as some things came in today, uh, thank you all for submitting those. Let's, let's get those to Ms. Moisten so she can start uh, compiling those in a, in a way that gets them to us in, in a timely manner. And uh, if, are there any other topics that we need to talk about right now or put on the agenda for next time. Okay, if not, I, I, I'd uh, welcome a motion uh, to adjourn. So move. That, that's your fourth one in a row too, Mr. Vernon Jones. I mean, nobody's counting, but I'm just saying, yeah. I'm, I'm just ready guess, to get out of here when we're done. Yeah, so, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cage, did you have your hand up as a second? I thought you did. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you. We are now adjourning this meeting at 744. Thank you all for your hard work. And uh, let's get ready for our, our next meeting and wish us all luck on the next steps with our bid process. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, everybody. Good work, good everybody. Night. Good job, everyone. Everyone. Yeah, Great really. job.